Hey, everybody. Uh, great to join you. I wish I was joining you all physically and that we were all meeting up, but uh, strange days. And uh, this is a, another way of meeting that we're all getting very used to these days. Uh, it used to be you left your office and you just worried whether you'd forgotten your notes. Now you have you brought this with you or not? Uh, so I think we're all we're all living the same life to some degree. And as the second wave begins to come back in so many countries, I think it's really, really important that events like this take time to reflect, to think about what has happened, to share experiences, to share the lessons, because it has been just an extraordinary year, an extraordinarily difficult year uh, for people across Europe. And it's not over yet in terms of public service media, a very important year, uh, probably one of the more unprecedented in recent decades. Uh, I think what we've done is we've shown the value of what you do, the value of what public service media does right across the board uh, in everything. And I'll talk a little bit in more detail, but right across from news, from covering public events, from covering gov government announcements, children's programming, arts programming, and uh, uh, support for the independent sector, as well as all of the entertainment programming, and all done against an incredibly difficult backdrop. And I think what we've seen is that the audiences have responded to that. They've responded in huge numbers, uh, you know, on an average, average increase of 20 percent on audiences for news bulletins, uh, 40, 50, 60 percent increases in some countries. We've seen 40 percent increase in digital. We've seen increased increases in young viewers uh, and young people accessing our, our TV programs, our radio programs, and most importantly, our online content. So we've seen a, a huge movement towards public service media. We've also, and, and remember this is one of our core values, we've also seen trust levels increase in some countries in extraordinary ways. Czech TV, 90% trust levels in output from Czech TV. And we've seen that in other country, other broadcasters in the region and around Europe. So it, it has been an extraordinary time. It has been an extraordinarily difficult time. It continues to be. But there are things, positive things, that we can take away from it. And I just want to talk a little bit about some of them. One of the most important uh, areas of output for us was in children's and educational programming. And I have some of the figures here in terms of what, what happened. Uh, public service media reached 57% of kids every week with their TV services during March. That's extraordinary. Uh, we haven't had those kind of figures in a very long time. Children's average daily TV viewing time increased by 19 minutes in March and April against the previous months. Uh, and that trend was probably most marked in uh, Southern Europe. Uh, PSM's online services also became really important with kids. Uh, kids' websites daily reach was up two to three times in April, May, compared to January, February. They're, they're extraordinary figures and uh, people were tuning in because they were getting something they needed and kids who are a very fickle audience came back and back and back. Um, in terms of educational content was also really important for us. Uh, public service media educational content reached 20% of kids in the first full week of lockdown in March. You know, it became the, we became the education portal when people, when schools were shut and people were at home. And uh, again, right across Europe, but particularly in your region, we saw some incredible examples of live, of new formats, of uh, old archive footage, uh, new programming. You know, if you look at HRT, Czech TV, uh, RTSH, RTV Slow were one of the first to uh, launch live educational content. They were followed shortly afterwards by uh, GPB, uh, UAPBC and LRT. And they created new channels uh, as well as launching new slots. 
Uh, LRT, for example, showed a daily two-hour program, Life Lessons, which included educational content delivered by famous people, experiments, creative exercises, online quizzes, where kids could engage online with the hosts in the studio. And that interactive element was really important and was you know, difficult to achieve, but became very important and a real success point for us. We shouldn't forget radio. Uh, some of our radio only members like Polish radio also provided uh, children's and educational content. I think one of the interesting things as well that we've seen over the last number of months is the, the role that traditional platforms played with kids. The daily viewing share for evening news bulletins was up 44%, 44% amongst that very elusive 14 to 24 year old age group. Uh, that's a really, really astounding achievement. Uh, as NRK in Norway told us, they thought that the days of linear TV viewing for young audiences were over, when in fact, we've shown that we can, with the right content, in the right circumstances, bring those younger audiences back. News was really important, uh, again, for young audiences, uh, where a lot of our members produced news output specifically for younger audiences, produced it in a new and innovative way to make it more attractive. Uh, we saw members engaging with celebrities, uh, for instance, where Rye had a program where celebrities showed how to properly wash hands, simple thing, but a life-saving thing, uh, and uh, younger audiences tuned in. We also saw people like Czech TV uh, working on daily news stories that children could relate to in a way that they understood, uh, MTVA and many others. Uh, focused on positive news uh, and the good effects of spending more time with our families in the middle of all of the downbeat updates on COVID, just having those kind of positive news as well as involving celebrities in an educational message worked really effectively. Entertainment programming was really important uh, and very difficult to produce given all of the restrictions around social distancing, use of masks. But again, members were really creative getting, and particularly as the crisis developed, they found ways of still doing productions, interactive productions, asking kids to send in videos of them singing, uh, bringing schools together, a whole range of interactive programming. Uh, there was also a lot of innovative production, RTP, in, uh, for instance, just one example, launched a new series of drama slots, Quarantine, uh, which looked specifically at the challenges of lockdown and isolation of teenagers. So again, Quarantines was one of those programs that addressed that younger audience with what was happening to them on a daily basis and you know entertaining but also part educational and well done to everybody i think delivering that kind of entertainment programming in the middle of a crisis where people are downbeat and where there is a lot of bad news i think keeping that entertainment program programming going is absolutely critical so we have had some success with that audience but we shouldn't kid ourselves or be naive about it. They are a difficult audience for us and for others. Uh, there's huge competition out there, huge amount of specialist channels and specialist ways of accessing that content. And we've seen that audience decline. You know, television's weekly reach for young people is 20% lower than that of the general population in Europe. We've seen that audience decline by 11% in the last five years. So it is a declining audience and a difficult audience and it's scattered everywhere but we've seen in the last seven months that with the right programming with the right focus we can have success there and i i think that's the overall message from where we are now is let's come away and look at the positives of what we've learned look at what we've done with trusted news the kind of reach and impact that we've had look at how creative we've become how relevant we've become we have had the biggest impact of any media organizations during this crisis, and we shouldn't forget that. And the audiences and hopefully political figures and regulators and others have realized that as well. You know, we've seen family content uh, become increasingly important, particularly during the lockdown phase. And, you know, we, we're all used to the scenarios of 
people watching five uh, different programs in five different rooms, but that family experience did become more important over the last number of months. And I think people responded to that. But what is it that will preserve PSM, that will help us with all demographics, but particularly younger demographics, is distinctive home production, distinctive content, creative content, knowing what your audience want, making it available on devices that young people access. And I think that's the critical lesson over the last number of months, the critical lesson as we face into another difficult winter. But I think we've shown that we can respond. We've shown that we can rise to these very, very difficult events and occasions. And I think that's, we, we need to take some comfort from that and take some confidence from that and move forward with the lessons and learn from them and develop. Thank you.